Oh, hey there, gang. This one today is going to be a quick little foray into tool modification. And customization, some kind of Asian. This is related to a couple of requests I've had from people asking about recrowning frets with a three-corner file that I've shown in a number of videos, and why I use that. Um, I don't always, you know, I, or at least I haven't always. I've tried a number of different things. I started off with this, this is a very old steel crowning tool. It's double-sided. I can't even remember where I got this one. Uh, it might have been Luthier's Mercantile? I don't know. Um, anyway, it did not last very long for me. Uh, the handle really gets in the way on this design, and if I had to continue using it, I would have cut it off. But the main thing is, it's so long that when you're working over top of the body on an acoustic guitar, on a guitar that has a radius fingerboard that is you know, 12 inches or less, you end up banging into the soundboard before you can get to the end of the fret. So, in effect, you've got to crown half the fret at a time. You start off at the center and work towards the outer edge, do all the frets, and then have to flip the guitar around to basically redo the other side of it, which I did not like. So, you know, I put that one away pretty quickly and got one of these. This is, um, from, I think it's Michael Gurian's factory that makes these. It's a set of three different smaller files in a bent handle. They're removable. And this works pretty well. I really like this. I use this quite a lot. Um, except for one thing I did not like, and that is the largest size of file here, even for use on jumbo frets, always seemed to sort of contact the center of the fret before I was really satisfied with the rounding on the shoulders. So in order to get this to work, you have to sort of rotate it while you're using it, which just, eh, it was kind of hit and miss. Like, it didn't get consistent results on the largest size of file. But I liked it for the medium size. So at some point I bit the bullet and I bought the diamond coated version of this one for use on the medium size frets. And I used that a lot for about five years. And it was very good. But it did wear out, and that got frustrating. So, on a whim, I made myself a very unrefined three-corner file with a safe edge. This is a double extra slim triangular file. And I just quickly ground the corner off so that it wouldn't cut into the fingerboard. And I didn't even do a super good job at that. But, you know, I always mask off the board when I'm crowning, and a few little rub marks on the tape, don't worry me. So it's been a couple of years with this one, and I like it. I want to make a new one, and perhaps refine this one a little bit. Um, I've noticed that I really only use the front two to three inches of this thing. 50 to 75 millimeters. So I've still got lots of file back here, which is perfectly sharp. I might chop this one off past the worn portion and shorten it up a bit and see if that works. Um, I've actually got a smaller version of a double extra slim taper file, which uh, I might do that as well and see if I can get away with using a smaller file. But then recently I bought this one. This is a Nicholson. This is the slim taper as opposed to the double extra slim taper, which is a bit heftier and wider in cross section. So I'm going to try this one as well. Of course, people are going to ask, why not buy one of those pre-made ones that you can get from the Luthier suppliers, and the simple answer is by the time I've paid for shipping for one of their three-corner files, it's five times the cost of one of these. And I don't know if it's pragmatism or being a cheapskate or growing up in certain circumstances, but I just, I like making stuff myself. And it's the same thing with those diamond-coated ones or the specialized shapes. Some of those will cost more than 150 bucks by the time it gets to me. Which, you know, I can probably write off after a few fret jobs, but I got used to the triangular file, and I think I, I like it better. And I think I might actually do a better job with this. So it's the one I'm going to stick with for right now. I decided to crack off the untoothed ends of the new files, so I made a little nick with a cutoff wheel to try and instigate a locus of fracture. Put it in the vise, and then gave it a whack, and it broke in a completely different place. I had better luck with the smaller file. I think it normally just breaks off where the support from the vise ends. I cleaned up the tips to make them square and safe. Then I softened all the edges.
and it passed the test by not severely damaging my thumbnail. And I did the same thing with this too long fret file, and I made this one into a little stubby. I thought I'd give them a trial run and see which one I liked best. Yes, there is a cat in the background. Um, the big one here works fine, no problem with it. It does feel a bit ungainly, it's a bit big. Um, that might just be personal preference from having used the small one for a number of years. I could get used to it. It does feel like I'm kind of obstructing my view a bit more than I'm used to. People ask if having to do both sides of the fret doesn't take twice as long. And maybe, but it also has advantages because it lets me pinpoint the wider areas, especially in a situation where I've spot leveled and only part of the fret is affected. I can really dial it in. The other thing is I've used them to physically shift the takeoff point for the string in very old guitars where the fret placement isn't as exacting as it is today. I've managed to correct things that were really quite flat or sharp by pushing the takeoff point forward or back a little bit. So it's not directly in the center of the fret, if you know what I mean. And we'll give this one a try as well. It's fine. Still doesn't feel quite as accurate to me. But it works. Having left just a thin line of untouched material in the center of the fret, I'll clean that off with some 600 grit sandpaper to smooth any artifacts from the initial leveling process. I always start off going side to side and finish off in line with the fret. After that, I'll go for the micro mesh pads to really make it shine. Bring it up to a mirror gloss. There we go. Thanks for watching.